Hello, Mr. Trevor. Welcome. Hello. How are you? Fine, how are you? Congratulations I'm good. for your marriage. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, it, it's great to see you here. It's the first time that we're doing this innovation conference and you have just came and thank you for accepting our request. We can have, we can have our sit and, you know, start. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, we were uh, talking about, uh, on the pre previous uh, session, we were talking about how hard it is uh, you know, innovating in, 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 in pharmaceutical industry because, you know, the cost of, you know, developing new drugs, discovering new drugs is increasing, right? Like, it's not a new thing for last decade or more, more longer time. Like, today, it's just, you know, like, on average, it's $1.6 billion, something like that, developing a new drug, cost of developing new What do you, I mean, um, how is Russia dealing with this? That's a very interesting question, and in fact, uh, it has uh, become very expensive to develop uh, new products. So, we, for example, in our company, uh, just to put this a little bit in perspective, um, we spend about, and putting this in Turkish lira, 80 million, 80 million Turkish lira per day on research. Oh. So this. Oh. Oh, yeah. okay. oh. Can you hear me? This okay, is better, yeah. so I'm, I'm repeating myself. Uh, the fact is that, um, you know, research has really become very costly and it's also, um, it takes a long time to develop a new product. So it takes about between 12 to 15 years to develop a new product. Um, our company uh, is perhaps uh, one of the highest spender in research globally of all industries. And as I mentioned, just to put this a little bit into perspective, we spend about 80 million, 80 million Turkish lira a day yeah. um, on research and development of new products, Saturday and Sunday included. <laughs> huh? so, uh, but the fact is that uh, it has become very costly because also um, today we know much more about diseases. Um, the spectrum is much bigger, the research is wider, and we can uh, go much deeper and analyze better and understand more. So um, it's, it's really a, a, a very long process and a very costly process. Yeah, I, Russia is interesting for me because um, a few years ago, you've turned to, I mean, globally, you turned to innovation uh, in order to, it was a, and uh, as far as I know, it was a transformation that was, um, all about to change everything within the company, that how you do, do business. And now you're one of the most um, leading, one of the leading companies in cancer drugs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, can you just give us more information about this transformation? Yeah, I think uh, in the pharmaceutical industry, I think, uh, and this is valid for every company, I don't think people realize that we are going actually through continuous transformation. And transformation is basically driven by science. We as Roche go where science is. So we have continuously new knowledge about diseases, new knowledge about um, you know, how to treat diseases. And what we do is we follow the science. And this means that you know, sometimes you have a breakthrough and of understanding in an area like cancer. And this can trigger you know, more research on cancer and, of course, more products uh, on cancer. So our company goes actually through continuous transformation. Um, if, we, if I think that, for example, the benefit that we have today of our cancer drugs started actually in uh, the early 1980s, where we invested over 10 years in, in companies that, uh, you know, were on this field, but the benefit came only later. So it's not something that is very fast. Yeah. It's something that takes time and um, we are, because of science, going really through a continuous uh, transformation because the product, because of science, they change over time. If I ask you, like, what are the main three pillars of innovation for Russia, like just point by point, what would you say? Yeah, as I mean, um, first of all, I think the most important thing is that you have a culture in the company that allows you to make failure because innovation has a lot to do with failure. Be 
you cannot just bet on one horse and think that horse will win the race. You have to bet on many horses. And I think you need to have a culture in the company that accepts failures that motivates also people through failure because through failure you learn and you can redirect. So this is really very crucial that you have such a culture. The other thing I think is you have to give the people enough space, uh, enough time, enough freedom to really do what they want to do, to follow the science, not you know, to follow internal protocols or to follow um, you know, certain di directives that are given by the company so that they really feel free and go and explore new things, new ways and, and are really <laughs> passionate about that. And I think this is uh, what uh, I think in Roche in particular we have, because, uh, and I can give you here another number, we have over 20,000 scientists globally, 20,000, yeah. and they do nothing else than wake up every morning to try to find a solution for a disease. So they have an incredible job to do, wow. a huge responsibility, and of course when they are successful we are also happy, mm -hmm. because then we can bring new really clinically differentiated medicines uh, for patients. Yeah, it resembles like, uh, you know, the, I would say traditional, but not companies are more acting like startups. I mean, what you were saying, failure, opening, being open to failure and, you know, having this open culture is the working with the startup way, right? <laughs> yeah, it is like in a startup. Of course, we are, I would say, in the research area, we are perhaps, you know, a hundred starts up mm -hmm. because we have, you know, lots of departments, they work on their own. They run, uh, you know, they, they, they follow what they believe is the right thing to do. And I think you need to manage that. And you need to have this freedom. And you cannot, you know, say on Friday night, I need a new product. And on Monday morning, it's there. It doesn't work like this. And, um, but over time, uh, I think, um, uh, you know, we have been very, very successful overall. And I would say that um, if, if we look at what the pharmaceutical industry has contributed the last 30 years. Just to summarize this, I think we can see that in average people live 10 years longer. And I think this is because we have done a lot of research and we have found a lot of solutions uh, for new diseases. Cool, yeah. Let's talk about Turkey because in our previous session, Dr. Sanyal told me that um, she's been the, actually, she has been the first one who, uh, who just developed a drug from scratch in Turkey. We don't have uh, like, uh, we, yes, we are developing drugs, but not from scratch, not just, you know, like her. Uh, what is Russia doing in Turkey? I mean, in terms of innovation, how are you transferring this culture to Turkey? Yeah, we are actually doing quite a lot. Um, we have, um, uh, what we do, we do clinical research here, which means we expose uh, patients today to uh, disease areas that we are studying. So we have uh, products here, or patients that are on products that are being developed. So these patients, they benefit actually from a new treatment option. And for some of them, especially in cancer, it means that uh, you know, they can live longer, they can live a better life, and they are basically benefiting from a product that is not officially yet registered because it's in clinical research. And, um, you know, they can uh, benefit from that. And I think that's a, that's a great advantage. And we do quite a lot uh, on clinical trials. Uh, we have uh, hundreds of clinical trials in Turkey on the new products, on hemophilia, on multiple sclerosis, in oncology, and in other disease areas. Um, and I think this is quite important to bring these, you know, new innovative products to Turkey and expose patients to them. Yeah, I have got a lot of questions, of course, on my hand, but I, uh, obviously I will not be able to ask you all of them. So, uh, to wrap up, uh, I, want to, I want to just ask you your vision, your targets, uh, specifically on innovation in Turkey for the near and the long term. Yeah, I mean, the vision uh, for our company uh, here local in Turkey is, of course, uh, take this, what we call this spirit also that we have in research, so to uh, give you know, the space to people, to give them freedom. But this means also they have to take the responsibility and you know, assume this freedom, assume this, this, uh, this, this uh, openness. But I think uh, in the long run, as, um, you know, Turkey is uh, quite uh, an important market uh, for the healthcare industry in general and also very important for our company.
Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Turai. You're welcome. It was a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much, Mr. Turai.